The first installment of Bayonetta shocked the gaming world with its over-the-top action and addicting gameplay, as well as its violent and suggestive themes. That is why the gaming world was shocked when Nintendo, the company that makes games for babies, announced an exclusive launch for Bayonetta 2. Many fans of the first Bayonetta who don't own a Wii U complained about Nintendo's exclusive deal with Platinum Games. But what those idiots don't understand is that if it wasn't for Nintendo, there would have never been a Bayonetta 2. What makes this game so special to me and the entire gaming community as a whole? For starters, this is by far the craziest game I've ever experienced in my entire life. From a pure gameplay standpoint, imagine God of War or Devil May Cry, but on steroids. On the surface, Bayonetta is just your standard button masher, but the dodge function in this game is the central theme, and if you can't anticipate your enemy's attacks in time for a nice counterattack, you will not last long. The controls are very simple for anyone to pick up and play, but all the combos you can implement give the hardcore gamers a big reason to keep playing this game. There are really only two attack buttons for combos, just an arm attack and a leg attack, but the amount of combos you can implement are actually very, very in-depth. You can also use your guns to shoot enemies, but that actually does the least amount of damage in the game, so I really didn't even use my guns that much. Yup, in Bayonetta you have to kill your enemies the old-fashioned way, by summoning torture chambers and shit. Bayonetta becomes a chess match as you progress against stronger enemies, and it's very important that you memorize their patterns. A perfectly timed dodge activates Witch Time, which is a slow motion section where you can abuse your enemy through your best combos. Every time you hit your enemy, your moon meter, which is basically like the equivalent of a magic meter, it fills up and it enables you to do special attacks like torture attacks. You also have like these final special attacks where you get naked and you use your hair to summon demons that kill your enemies in the most violent possible ways. God, this game is awesome. For all you completionists out there, after every fight you get a medal that ranks you based on how much damage you took, how quick it took to kill the enemy, and how many combo points you racked up. This makes the replayability addicting. There are different weapons and abilities in this game that you can purchase along the way with a currency system that accumulates after every enemy that you kill. Since you can equip different weapons to your hands and feet, you can mix and match until you find the optimal playstyle that fits you the best. Variety as well as trial and error are two great philosophies that Bayonetta thrives off of. Bayonetta is one of the most fantastic characters. She's a lot more than just a Sarah Palin fantasy. Truly larger than life, there's a level of confidence that you have when you play as Bayonetta. She never really takes any of her enemies seriously as there's no true threat against her that you feel like can stop you. Throughout every cutscene, she obviously kicks ass, but what makes this such a great game is that you kick ass yourself just as well through the regular gameplay. If you've never played this game before, you would think that the footage that you're looking at is the final boss, but it's actually the boss of the first freaking level. Bayonetta continuously ups the ante as the levels progress. So on the surface, who is Bayonetta? Well, she's a witch who has to continuously kill angels, and in the second installment, demons as well. I don't really have much to tell you about the story itself. It seems very in-depth, but I didn't really have the brain capacity to follow it. Instead of paying attention to the storyline, I just really paid attention to the violence. And man, is the violence fun. Same issue with the first game, the supporting characters are actually pretty great, but you only really get to see them in the beginning of the game. After that, you don't really get to see much of them. Bro, bro, bro Don? But I don't believe in Sam! Watch your mouth, Ito. When I played Dynasty Warriors 2 on the PS2 for the first time, I was blown away. You were this one-man army wiping out endless waves of enemies. You were almost like a superhero. Bayonetta took that idea of being a superhero, but actually implemented great game design with its difficult enemies, unlimited amount of combos, and dodge sequences. Just like Donkey Kong's transition from the Wii U to the Switch, Bayonetta is also going to be on the Switch soon. Bayonetta 2 is truly one of a kind, and it got perfect reviews on plenty of gaming sites, so if you've never played it before, it's really a must-play. This game is at the top of its genre. 
The ambiance of this game, from the special art style to the jazzy upbeat music, makes this such a unique experience that I don't think will ever be replicated by any other franchise. If you like killing shit through over-the-top scenarios that provide a great amount of challenge, look no further. Play this game immediately.